God. Okay, welcome again to Reason and Truth Ministries. This week we're going to be looking at the whole aspect of the human person. And when I say the whole aspect of the human person from the, the soul, you know, and um, in Scripture we always, in the New Testament, we refer to human person as tripartite. And some school of thought refer to the dualistic aspect of human being, mind and body or soul and body. However, <clears throat> through the transference of the language, what has happened over time is that the, the word soul has been used in many various places and interchanging with what we call heart and emotions and this aspect of our being. Now, what I want to touch on in, res in, um, in reference to apologetics and Shema in relation to provision, identity and institution, how we relate with people in this environment in reference to identity. Because when we talk about a human person, we're talking about the identity of a human being and 90% of the time we only refer to when we say, when we hear the word soul, what we are thinking about. Soul. What we think about when we hear the word soul. Body. Huh? Body. Say that again. Body. Body. What else? Your mind. Your mind. Will and emotions. Will and emotions. Right? So now mind, will, emotions, and body. Now that is how we relate to what we call soul in, in this 21st century and prior, like in the 1500s and the 1800s, the, 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 that, that phase of the Enlightenment in the 1800s where information was readily available to uh, a cross-section of people and where now that idea has been now compounded by certain philosophers and what have you. And we know the West, the, our, our sense of reasoning or information has been cultivated by whom? And by what? By, what we see in there. by Aristotle and Plato, right? Those two ideas are in reference to the nous and also the material realm where body is all there is. Now, what I want us to look at is, from the Hebraic perspective, how does this whole idea and this concept of soul, what is it? What is the soul? When the Bible speaks about soul, what is it really referring to? Now, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Genesis 9, 6. Find Genesis 9, 6. Genesis 9, 6. Genesis 9, 6, you found it? Sorry. And somebody find Genesis 2, 7 for me. All you found it? Yeah. yeah. Somebody can read it for me. Nine. Genesis 9 6. Whoever sheds man's blood, his blood will be shed by man, for God made man in his image. Right? Whoever sheds man's blood, by his blood, it shall be what? Shed by man. It should be requested, and it shall be requested by the blood of another man. So we see in that word there, blood is in reference to nesh, nefesh. And also, find, somebody found Genesis 2, 7 for me. Genesis 2, 7. Okay, and it says, um, And Noah went in, and his, and, his, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons, wives, with him, into the ark. No, Genesis 2-7. Oh, I'm chapter 7. Yeah. And the Lord God 
formed the man out of dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostril, and the man became a living so, being. Living being, some Bible say being, some Bible say soul. Okay? So now we're seeing, we're seeing uh, 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 the use of many different words here. And somebody find Genesis 1 30 for me. Somebody found it? Genesis 1 30. Um, for all the wildlife, the earth, for every bird of the sky, and for every creature that crawl on the earth, everything having the breath of life in it, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. All right. The breath of life. And that word, the breath, what does, what, that word in the Hebrew is the word nephesh. And nephesh speaks about that which gives man that aspect of life. Nephesh. So, and the nephesh in the Hebraic culture, the nephesh is known to be the blood. This is why the Bible says, don't do what to the blood? Don't eat it. Right? Don't drink it. Because the what? Life is in the Blood. So we see seeing nephesh is in reference to the blood. So the blood of a person speaks about the very what? The very life. That aspect of that person. The, the, the rest. The return to spiritual repose. That, that which makes you who you are as a person or not even as a person, as a being. Because we see who also have this nephesh in them. Yeah. No, who also have this nephesh in them? We just read that Genesis 1.30. Animals. animals. So now this is why you have these two schools of thought that animals are what? They have soul. Because that in itself, it going to what, what aspect of soul are we speaking about? What, what aspect of, because it have blood just as we have blood and that which give <coughs> animal that life power is in reference to the blood because the blood it does what it goes all over the human body or the animal's body right so let's hold that there for a moment <coughs> so we we get an understanding of the nephesh now just as how in the greek it have um Like multiple words for soul and uh, mind and, and, and heart and <coughs> what is the word for soul in, the, in, 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 in Greek? If you can remember, nous, right? And nous is that aspect of, <coughs> of that uh, abstract. And then how do they relate to the mind? With the psyche. Right? They, they relate to the man with the psyche. And how do they relate to the heart? With the um, kedosh. Or, um, not kedosh. Um, um, what's the word? Kada. Like cardiologist. Kadia. So now, and all of those words, it relates, it have its relation to the, sens the sensory system or that which you connect or you relate with. But if we don't have a clear understanding of what the soul is, then when we are communicating and when we are having discussion with people in this world, we are going to miscommunicate based upon our provider, who provides for us our provision and how we relate with our identity. Because now our identity is going to be within different aspects of what we are now presenting and who we are relating to. So the nephesh, it goes towards that, that life center of that person or that thing, the animal, so we can relate with animals. We can train animals. Then we go on to the ruah. I know what, we, what, what does ruah mean? Spirit. Ruah, you say, you say spirit, but ruah, it more literally means wind. Wind, right? And the, the Ruah of God, or the Spirit of God, you see now the same word in Genesis 1, 
the rule of God what moves upon the face of the water. So now when we look at somebody find Genesis 2 7 for me. So now the Ruah relates to the what? To the spirit. And that spirit is in reference to that which Hashem or the, the Holy Spirit. So you say Ruah HaKodesh, right? Kodesh is holy. Ruah is spirit. And it always, always tend to relate spirit with God, Yahweh. So, however, that word in itself, it has its relation to wind. Okay? Somebody already found it? And somebody find Proverbs 23 7 for me. Okay, we found it? Mm -hmm. Alright, somebody read Genesis 2 7 for me. Then the Lord God formed the man out of dust from the ground. And breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. Um, uh -huh. The man became a living being. He breathed the breath of life into him. So the breath, that breath of life, that breath. So that wind, that ruha is what he breathed. He breathed the ruha into man. And man became a living being, right? Somebody from Proverbs 23, 7. Read it for me. For it's like someone calculating inwardly. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. I know, what was it just reading? He said for verbs. Yeah, 23, 7. Right. No, what version is that he reading? Um, the whole man. No, read it in, uh, read it in the, um, the King James for me. Thanks. As he thinketh in his heart, 